Baker Brothers is uh, somewhat different from immunology, but it could be a very tool, a uh, very good tool for immunology to perform experiments. So today I'm going to talk about using Baker Brothers to display foreign service antigens and for various immunological and then applications. So Baker Brothers is a non-human pathogen. In fact, only insects. It has been long been approved by country worldwide for farmers as a biological pesticide to eradicate insect pests without the need of chemical pesticides. Therefore, it's a very safe entity for experimental studies. It belongs to the family of Baker Brothers and it's a long rough shed virus with envelope as a, a big DNA virus. So this virus can be purified by sequence gradient and then examined by electron microscope. I did this a long, long time ago, so you know how, how old I am. <laughs> okay. So Baker virus have four gene classes in their life cycle. Once the virus is going to the cell, it will generate so-called immediate origin, and this gene can uh, stimulate gene expression right away without the assistance of other viral uh, gene products. And then at the late stage, virus can be budding out. So for most viruses, this is the termination, the end of life cycle. However, Baker virus can go further and produce a protein called polyhedron. So this polyhedron will embed virus particle to protect the virus particle. And then the level of gene expression is extremely high compared with immediately genes. Therefore, uh, we can use Baker virus using this promoter for large scale protein productions. So I will divide my talk into several small sections. So the first one is a Baker virus tool for protein expression. So I just mentioned that Baker virus can generate a lot of protein at very late stages. However, we can use their promoter for foraging production. And also, Bacillus has an envelope of protein called GP64. It's a type of a membrane protein, uh, uh, which is trimenical proteins. So, uh, if you examine the cell infected by Bacillus, you will see a lot of occlusion body inside the nucleus. So, this is a cytosolic region. So you can see there are so many uh, protein uh, called occlusion body, which is made of collagen protein I just mentioned. So if you blow up this uh, occlusion body, you can see the collagen uh, can constitute uh, most of the uh, protein which embed virus particle. So if you subject the insect cell to j electrophoresis, you will see a lot of bands. However, if the cell has been infected by Baker virus, you will see a major band called polyhedron. And you can use this promoter to express other proteins. And then this one, of course, has been eliminated. Large scale protein can be uh, produced. So, Baker virus has been a very popular tool for animal vaccine production worldwide. And then the first human vaccine generated by Baker was the cervical canics vaccine from GSK. And then also another one, hemagglutinin, subunit vaccine against influenza virus by uh, another company. So uh, we can use Baker virus for producing protein in insect cell. And then we can also use uh, Baker virus to produce protein in insect larva. So this is uh, insect larva by a uh, Baker virus infection for the first day and second to three days and uh, third to four days. So the insect will lit up and then you can see it becomes a very beautiful fluorescent uh, insect. But the previous one is tiny, okay? And this one, sick worm, is much larger. So you can use the sick worm as a bioreactor for protein production. So the uh, sick worm can be about this big, about six centimeter uh, up to eight centimeter. So they are different species. So this one is quite resistant to Baker virus. This is more sensitive, and this is very sensitive to Baker virus. Therefore, you can produce a lot of protein. You can also use a Baker virus in a uh, sick worm to produce green worm, fluoride, and then many other uh, vaccine, uh, very other uh, anti antigens for various applications. So, uh, Baker virus can produce a protein. It also can be displayed surface, surface, uh, on the surface of envelope uh, to 
represent those detrimental virus antigens and for various applications. So the first application, uh, what I try to show is that to identify such antigen responsible for cytokine storm. So uh, SARS virus uh, is very detrimental virus and occur in year 2003 to 2002 to 2003. And then people believe uh, spike protein should be uh, the target, the Caucasian gene, which trigger uh, cytokine storm. But the problem is that this is a trimeric membrane protein. Therefore, people purify protein, general engineering cannot trigger cytokine storm. However, if you do the other way, then it will work. So the, I'm sorry. So the way we did was, uh, I mentioned that Baker virus has a membrane protein called the GP64. It's a trimeric protein. And we found that if we collect uh, the cytosolic domain, which is a domain under uh, envelope, this is GP64. So this is the particular domain. And then we engineer to the uh, base of the spike, which is a C terminal or spike. This will allow spike from the SARS virus to anchor on the envelope of Baker virus. So this way, uh, we can use insect cell uh, by making a genetic engineer of Baker virus. So the virus is going to the cell, and then at the body of the cell, you will decorate it with a spike of protein, and we prove those are trimeric uh, envelope proteins. Therefore, we can use this virus to interact with the cell. So at uh, that time, people already know ILA is a very uh, important cytokine to trigger a uh, cytokine storm. So we engineer e, uh, GFP protein on the envelope of Baker virus, and also the spike protein on the envelope of Baker virus. And then we found if we treat the uh, lung cell, this is one lung cell, the other uh, lung human lung cell. If we treat uh, this virus to lung cell, nothing will happen. But if we treat the lung cell with this engineered pro, uh, virus, then it will trigger ILA secretion. Therefore, we knew at the time that this uh, protein must be very important for triggering cytokine storm and then which kills a uh, patient. Okay. So, it also can serve as convenient antigen for antibody production. Uh, so we use a similar strategy to uh, study influenza virus. So of course everyone knows influenza virus is quite uh, important virus uh, come all over the world uh, every year. So influenza virus has two surface membrane proteins. One is the hemagglutinin, hemagglutinin. The other one is neuraminidase. Okay. So hemagglutinin is a trimeric protein and neuraminidase is a, a tetrameric protein and which anchor N terminal to the envelope, and this one anchor C terminal to the envelope. Uh, therefore, these two proteins are quite different, but those are two uh, important uh, service uh, antigen from influenza virus. So, okay. so we tried a similar strategy uh, by anchoring CTD from TP64 uh, to the uh, C terminal of the uh, hemagglutin. And we found it could be successful to anchor the trimeric protein on the envelope of Baker virus. So uh, this, the, uh, after engineering, this H7N9 uh, uh, influenza virus, so you can see, uh, you can detect uh, the production of HA or NA uh, on Baker virus. So this is just GP64 as a control. So this white type, you cannot see it. And uh, it's known that hemagglutinin means it can agglutinate the uh, red blood cell, okay? So you can see the red blood cell, after agglutination, it becomes like a spongy-like. So just precipitate in the medium, uh, without precipitate down, as a, a red dot in a well. Okay. So Baker virus, when interact with red blood cell, nothing will happen. So the red blood cell will put it down uh, to the very bottom, okay, since the bottom is uh, uh, it's around the bottom, okay? But if we engineer hemagglutinin onto the envelope of Baker virus, then you can see the Baker begin possible to agglutinate a red blood cell, 
okay, uh, after various dilutions, uh, you can begin to see the precipitation of red blood cell. So this suggesting this hemagglutin not only trimerica, not only on the envelope, in fact, it's a functional uh, hemagglutin. And then we use electron microscope to study and found that hemagglutin actually anchored to one tip of the back virus. So this is the same region as uh, loss of GPCK4 also anchored on one end of the back virus. This uh, control. So we use insect cell to generate this kind of pseudo virus. Okay, and then use the pseudo virus to infect, to inject into the mouse, and we found we can generate uh, antibody. And then we also use the same virus to infect either insect or mammalian cell. Okay, mammalian cell we call transduction. In fact, it's not infection. But in the insect cell, it's infection. So in the insect cell, big virus will produce two major service proteins. One will be hemagglutin, the other one will be gp 4 But in mammal, it will produce only HA. Okay, so making the system more clear. So we can use this cell line to exit the antibody, especially the antibody collect from a uh, mouse. So uh, this, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so after infection of the, this uh, bacteria we call HA back uh, to insect cell or memorial cell, it will produce a membrane proteins. Okay, and then we can see the cell into the uh, plate and uh, we can uh, use it recumbent beta virus to infect the insect cell and then later in interact with different uh, monoclonal antibodies. So if there is interaction, you can see fluorescence, either stronger or weaker. If not, so this is a negative control, this is a positive control. So by using this kind of uh, high throughput screening methodology, you can screen a lot of antibody at once and then it's easy uh, process to do. So we can uh, see uh, if we use a uh, bacteria virus to produce hemagglutin, and this bacteria virus does not produce hemagglutin, just wire type of bacteria virus as a control. So you can see that basically this is the basal level of interaction. And then some of the monoclonal body uh, can be strongly reacted with uh, the bacteria virus infected cell, and then some of them infected with both. Probably this. Uh, because the monoclonal body in the regular is GP64 or big virus, and both virus has GP64. Therefore, you can see signal for both. So this uh, convenient way to uh, screen those antibodies. So there are more antibody for screening. Now, talking about neuraminidase, there's another antigen, surface antigen. And this becomes more complicated because they are totally different orientation, this N-terminal, to anchor uh, cell uh, envelope, so neuraminidase. And neuraminidase is used to remove cytic acid residue from cell surface protein upon virus budding out of the cell. So it has enzymatic activities. So when big virus infect a cell, when flu virus infect a cell, I'm sorry, uh, it requires hemagglutin to recognize the receptor. Uh, when virus budding out, it requires neuraminidase to chop off the cytic acid. Otherwise, the hemagglutin will interact with the cytic acid, therefore cannot put out. And then, uh, tummy flu is targeting for the enzymatic activity of NA. Reindeer virus cannot put it out of the cell, therefore we can cure the flu virus disease. So, uh, we using, we try the, uh, the strategy to anchor the neuraminidase onto the envelope of the bacteria virus. So you find it's also working quite well. And then we also uh, assay the activity of this NA uh, with, uh, some, with a, a compound called the Murana, and then it works quite well. Okay, so the neuraminidase also display on the surface of the virus, and then the assay, and then also display on one tip of the virus. Uh, then we can use that to uh, assay a monoclonal antibody. So again, we can identify a lot of monoclonal antibodies. So most of them have stronger uh, response with uh, hemagglutin. So let me give you, you a quick, quick summary. So bacteria can be a safe and convenient tool for the stocking of detrimental virus as 
shooter type of viruses. And stuck a detrimental virus library, uh, the shooter type virus can be stuck as a precious set of a detrimental virus library, which, okay, not possible to collect or keep in most selectory. And foreign viral protein display on the vector are functional. So, uh, for example, antigenicity, hemagglutination, hemagglutinin inhibition, and lamentic activity, etc. And resolving the difficulty of most or animal injections. Usually, if you want to generate antibody against the hemagglutinin, uh, probably people got to inject the real virus, flu virus, uh, to the mouse. But usually, this <coughs> real mouse. Therefore, you got to fix it. Uh, before injection. But uh, as you recognize, uh, hemagglutin is a trimedical protein. So at the fixation, the conformation may be changed. But for bacterial virus, you don't have to fix it at all. So you can inject the bacterial virus directly to the mouse and then making a very good antibody against, uh, especially those kind of conformation or neutralizing antibody can be generated. And bacterial virus presenting foreign peptide can be a best vaccine. Bacterial virus is proved to be an adjuvant, no need to uh, purify the display the uh, membrane protein. It could be a number type of cheap and efficient vaccine. Uh, usually, uh, some people uh, use bacterial virus to produce a membrane protein and then purify it. But at the purification, you got to uh, you got to pull out this anti uh, antigen away from the membrane. Therefore, you got to use the detergent. Then bacterial virus is soluble, so you don't have to use detergent. Okay, so. Uh, the, uh, the work was done by my technician and postdoc, Tessin Liu and Hui Lu Lo. And then this also a cooperation with uh, National Taiwan University and others. Okay. Thank you very much.